So, hey. Do you remember what happened last time in this game? Because I kind of do. <laughs> There's an evil Sissel who we are calling Sussel. And this calls so many things into question. Like, is there another version of him? Am I not actually Sissel, but I think I'm Sissel because something's gone wrong? Did Sissel's humanity split into his good nature and his bad nature? Like, I don't know. It could be any of these or none of these. It could be something else entirely. Um, but, but we, we have had the revelation that it was in fact Sissel in some form or fashion that held Baby Lynn hostage 10 years ago. Um, but instead of being killed by the good detective, he was actually <laughs> killed by a meteorite from space, which somehow Joe feels counts as him shooting the man because in his heart he was ready to shoot the man. Which I'm pretty sure is not how that works in a court of law. But you know, what do I know? I don't know how the, the legal system works in their, comp in their country. Um, anyway, some big revelations that I actually mostly remember. Um, and we, we, we went to the... groundskeeper's office, I, superintendent's office, and found that Cabanella had been shot. And so we had to try to save him because we thought maybe he was a bad guy, but it turns out he was actually being controlled, not directly, indirectly, with the threat of a gun to his brain, as opposed to the like, physical make you sign this thing manipulator stuff um, that uh, apparently evil Sissel did to other people um, and so we thought oh no is Cabanella actually gonna be a bad guy but then it seems he's not a bad guy but he's maybe a flawed person um, so then we have to save him and then piggyback from that to the the superintendent groundskeeper dude himself, Mr. Pigeonhead, who was killed in an explosion caused by Sussel. Um, so when, uh, when Sissel, my Sissel, started talking to them, like, they actually responded pretty well, especially this old guy's just kind of like, oh, okay, hello, I'm talking to the dead. And you're like, wait, what? Everybody else has a hard time with this. But something about this man is a matter of national security. I don't know, maybe he's like some deity come to Earth. Or, or aliens! He could be an alien. So instead of researching aliens, he could be keeping up with what other aliens are doing with his mysterious and suspicious devices. I don't know. Anyway, so now we have to save the old man and we have to save Cabanella and then save the world. But I'm pretty sure that this whole thing is one big loop we're gonna have to undo. They've set that up, I think. We're gonna piggyback off of a bunch of people's deaths and maybe eventually prevent the death of Jode's wife um, and perhaps even the death of the original. Original? Sissel? Sussel? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's. I think that's about, I think that's about everything. Everything I can think of. So I'm gonna dive in. 2.42 AM. We're gonna see what happens. All right. So yeah, so here's Cabanella watching as this dude uses his, uh, Ghostbuster box, I don't know, to detect. 
He's trying to find the source of Sussel's power, and I think he talked about destroying it. So there's something. It's probably the meteorite in the body. <laughs> um, so we have to make it seem like this guy has died. So I can't... So basically, I'm going to mess it up if I, if I alert this guy to my presence. It's been made clear that if he detects that a ghost is active. It's game over. I wonder if the blue people are undead. The Falians, they could be undead. I don't know, man. Let's see what happens though, shall we? See what happens if we alert him to our presence? Oh, that's the measuring device, okay. I can examine this. Okay, sure, let's do that. What in the world is this thing? This device has that meteorite data entered into it. If it detects temsic radiation, it responds. Oh, oh, look at that. Specific to whatever's going on in temsic. Got that, kid? Isn't it a lovely thing? You know, Cavanilla, I don't know how much older you are than Sissel, but I don't know that you should be calling him kid. I, I don't think he's that young. Although you do have graying temples, so maybe you're an old man, but probably not. I guess sometimes it's important not to think about things too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> the game writers are like, look, we're not promising an airtight setting. Just roll with it, man. It's fine. It's fine. We're fine. Okay. <laughs> what a sorry pair. All right, what else can I do here? I can't see what's down there, but I'm gonna have to wait until the explosion and then I'm gonna open this up before this guy explodes. Don't be daft. That cracked. Wait, hold on, hold on. He's completely dead, but just as I thought, I'm getting a reading. This is the source of his powers. If I remove it, he's not dead, he's just not there. The true form of the manipulator isn't something you can detect, it's a spirit. He's really worked up about this. So maybe the, the like stinky rays that come out of Sissel's body, maybe that's the presence of Tamsic radiation, that's the word they use. What's down there? What if we down there? This is the wrong timing. Do I try to get the timing right or do I do it wrong and investigate a thing? Well, I'm probably gonna get it wrong anyway, so. All right, he's awake. You're a clever man, Inspector Cavanella. Oh my god. So it's really true, you're... I wasted a lot of time tonight because of you, Inspector. Ah, he doesn't have a core. He doesn't have a core. No core. No core. just like you said. So it's true, you were manipulating my baby that time. You made her shoot your shell. But why? Why would you do a thing like that? I remember this. It's evidence. I don't like that smile. I still don't like that smile. <sighs> yeah. It's really upsetting. He's leaving this country. Presumably he's gonna ride on the submarine, not spaceship, and escape to another country. So I'm not reading this out loud, but I know that I've done this before. I read this out loud yesterday, so. 
along with the contraption in this room. So he's gonna destroy evidence of his powers as well as this contraption. So this contraption being in this room is significant somehow. Submarines are the spaceships of the sea. I suppose so. Listen to that alliteration, man. It's no use, I can't open it. The fact that the professor is standing on it have anything to do with it? It may look small, but I'm pretty heavy set. He sounds so proud of that fact, too. This door. Such a pity. Too bad it doesn't open downward. Sometimes life can be so hard. Wouldn't you agree, Professor? Yeah, that's why we're both dead. Hmm, the door that opens downward, eh? What do I have to say here? As you perhaps have already noticed, time is running out, baby. Yeah, no perhaps about it. I know, but you know, there aren't a whole lot of things I can use my ghost tricks on in here. Looks like it's all over. Unless I find another path, I'm sort of at a deadlock here. Sissel. Hey, I know that voice. Who's talking to me? Help me. I don't remember this last time. But where are you? Find me before I'm carried away. Hmm? What's with the frail sounding call for help? He's here somewhere. A friend of yours? Yeah. <gasps> oh! Oh, I did the wrong voice! Oh, I did the wrong voice! Okay, well. It's not my fault when they don't tell me what the voice is. Yep, a little guy that looks a little fragile, but has the strength that surprised you. Well, he's asking you to find him. And before he's carried away, no less. But I'm almost out of time. Should I look for him? I should look for him. Balance toy. If I can stop this toy from spinning, I can halt the contraption. That won't really solve anything. There's a smart boy. If you stop the explosion, he'll just find another way to get me. And it would probably give away the fact that you're here too. So I have to rescue you without stopping the explosion. Is that even possible? That's what has to be done. Deal with it. Cranky old man. Can't do anything there. Can't open it. Okay, a door that opens upward. I guess I better look for the doggy. Why is the doggy here? There's not a lot I can do here, no. That was a wheel down there. Does this guy step off of it? I might have to repeat this. I'm, I know, I know time is passing. I'm just trying to figure out if he steps off the door at any point. Oh. <laughs> the fact that the guy in red is standing out have anything to do with it. Is he more heavy set than he looks too? <laughs> he sounds offended. Why are you asking me? <laughs> because it's you, ostensibly your body, Sissel, maybe? This door. Ah. Alright. I can't reach there with my little paw. I can't reach anywhere with my little paw. There's... There's some mice. And a wheel. How do I get down there, though? How do I get down there? 
If only you had a core. I was gonna say if only you had a soul. There's a contraption there. I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, here's the doggy. Yes, I know doggy, I know. I don't know how to look for him. I don't know what else I can do. Okay. I hope I wasn't supposed to ride that. to get out of the room. Cause that's the only thing that I can think of that moves, but I don't think it's rideable. Yeah, I don't think there's a thing that I can see. Okay, hold on. something I can do here before I get carried away do I get into the telephone there's a ball something else I can do but not this <sighs> fool what do you think you're doing I just thought I'd try it out if you do you're going to set the contraption in motion oh yeah I just thought he just thought he'd blow me up is what he thought. Oops, that was my bad. But there aren't a whole lot of things I can use my tricks on in this room. No, that's true, there aren't. Oh, I don't know what else I can do, man. I'm not sure. All right, folks. I'm sorry. Cavanella jumps away really cool as the dead body approaches him. He's like, oh crap. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, okay. There's gotta be something I can do. There's, it's true, there's not a lot of things I can, I can interact with. Stop this from spinning. Stop setting the contraption. He says, there's a smart boy. No. I don't know.
Well... Yes, I don't know. Sissel. There he is again. Farewell. Dot, dot, dot. Sounds like your little pal was carried away. Where was he? Maybe you should have tried to find him somehow. Maybe you should have looked around, you know, from corner to corner, baby. Now what? Maybe I should start over. Okay, fine. We'll start over. I don't know how to do that. Wait! Wrong button. Oh! Oh, I didn't, I didn't see this. I didn't mean to see this. I was trying to hit a different button. However, I have to point this out. Me, the mystery. I lost my life at a lonely spot on the outskirts of town. That Sissel fellow that I thought was me is apparently not me. That's excellent. Cavanella. After calling the minister from the junkyard office, demanding that the execution be carried out, he was shot and killed by the other me. Did anyone else update? No. That's great. I hope that beauty isn't the reincarnation, or not the, or the undead version of Jared Swift. Okay, now hold on. I was hoping. I was hoping I could hit the where's the doggy button. From corner to corner, I'm looking. I'm looking in the corners. Where else would he be carried away? Time is passing. Okay, I've looked from corner to corner. Let's look for a doggy. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, I know. Where could you be getting carried away in the building? Yes, I know, I know, I don't know. Okay, so presumably there's something obvious here that I'm overlooking. All right, Lauren. Thinking in terms of what is obvious, what is, the, the game is going to, the game clearly I don't think this is supposed to be hard. So the game is assuming that whatever I'm supposed to do here, I'm gonna be able to figure out on my own, which means it can't be that hard. You know, like, there are exactly four things that I can interact with. And the switching to the doggy button doesn't seem to be doing anything, so I don't think it's that. Cause I'm trying to hit the hit the doggy button, and the doggy button is not doing anything. So the doggy's not here and playable. So what do I have under my control? I have the ability to move around. These are the only four things that I can reach. If I try to use this, it tells me I can't use this. Oh, maybe I can use a measuring device. Yes. Okay, nope. I thought maybe it would help me identify where 
missile is. Um. Okay, yeah, so my abilities are I to move around and do the interact button. I have done the interact button on, on, there are only two things I can reach that I can do the interact button with. And they yell at me for that. And I can't switch with my doggy friend. So, and I can't see him anywhere on the screen and I don't see anyone carrying him. So the, the only thing I can think of is that maybe the answer isn't this puzzle. Maybe the answer is like the previous. Like, can I go back to the previous encounter? No, I can't. Okay. So this is the only option I've got. All right. <sighs> Nothing else is reachable. I can't get up there. I can't get down there and I can't open the door. And they said to look from corner to corner. And all I see is there's mice. Wrong button. And I don't know what's in there, but it's possible. I mean, I guess actually he could be like in the river. being carried away. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I know. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. I forgot he was a leaf now. Uh, okay, so all you have to do is find him. So they did in fact give you the hint, which is to look for him. I thought that what I had to do was look for him before he speaks. But actually, after he shows up is when you look for him. There was an obvious solution that they tried to give me a hint for. All right, are you ready for missile? <laughs> All right, Sissel, here I am. Oh, hey, it's missile. What are you doing there? Do you really have to ask? Seriously, are you really going there? Uh, no, that's okay. Never mind. Anyway, I need your powers. Will you help me out? Of course! Here, let me come join you! Oh, I was gonna try to control that, but I didn't have to. Okay, here I am, Sissel! Now maybe things will flow in a new direction. Huh? Huh? Get it? <laughs> even though the flow of the sewer is a little bit stinky. Fate changed. There's the doggy button. Okay, what can you, what can you do? What can you do? What can he do? Lamp, telephone, lamp, fall. Okay. So I can go anywhere. 
then what do I do? Oh, I swap things. I swap things. What can I swap? Hold on. Hold on. Oh, can I swap the doors? No, I can't swap the doors. Hold on. Oh, I can talk. Hold on. Do you remember how to use my powers? Yeah, you can swap things that have the same shape, right? Well, to be precise, I can swap things that look like they have the same shape. What's the difference? As I was being carried by the wind and falling into the river, I realized something. If you look at a thing from different angles, it looks different. You know, that's a pretty good point for a little doggy who came in with the sewage. Okay. So there is a ball and this, but they I can't swap them. We got a trash can lid, trash can. Those squeaky guys are making a fuss about something. Sissel? My animal instincts are starting to surface. Do you mean you want to chase them? I think you have to be alive to do that. Hmm. There must be some kind of rat feast in that trash can. Those things usually make a bigger commotion than that. A bigger commotion, eh? Hold on. No. Can I, okay, I can't swap those, okay. Old newspapers. I can swap those. some proper commotion and making that trash can dance truth be told I feel a bit like dancing now myself it's getting harder and harder to hold my wild instincts back what a dangerous bunch <laughs> dangerous rats trick time hold on we're gonna see what it says to say okay let's stop that explosion uh, no we, we can't do that okay let's take care of that man in red then no, we can't do that either. We can't do this. We can't do that. What can we do? We let the explosion happen. Then we rescue the old pigeon guy without the man in red noticing. And your powers are the key to all of it, Missile. Oh, I don't know about that, but I'll do my best. We're talking about a matter of seconds. We can't miss our chance. Yes, yes, I know. Ah, trash can lid. And a wheel. Sure. Door that opens downward, though. What do you mean by that? Wrong button. Wrong button. Oh, it turned. It's no use. I can't open it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Oh! 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 You go this way. You make the make the swap. Why? Why? How? No, I can absolutely make that swap. They look the same. They look the same. Look, they're the same. Why? Why is that not working? I don't understand. It hadn't fully settled. It needed to fully fall and settle. Look out! Got it.
Sorry, little pigeon. As for you, Inspector. Mm. I have a little job for you. I can't move. I think I have four or five broken bones. I don't mind. It won't prevent me from manipulating you. It might make it hurt a little bit when I move you, though. Quite a bit, actually. D Damn you! Well, that's not good. It even makes a little pigeon noise. I know what pigeons sound like because there's pigeons that fly around my building and Sophie really enjoys them. All right, we did it. <laughs> All right. I can't believe it. You lot actually pulled it off. Sorry, Inspector Cavanella. I couldn't do anything to help you. See? Cecil is a nice guy. And there I am, a poor broken heap of arms and legs. But no matter, I enjoyed the show. The magic disappearing act, that is. Nothing like it, baby. Yeah, except, unlike a normal magic trick, I'm the one that managed to vanish without a trace here. Updated the phone book. <gasps> Fate averted. All right, we're gonna look at that phone book. Oh, Cavanella is having thoughts, thoughts, and feelings. That's right, because according to Cecil, the his case was the only blotch on Cabanella's record. And so it is, in fact, Cabanella's fault that whatever happens, because he was, I believe, um, Cecil was, I think, being interrogated or something, being held prisoner um, or something, and he escaped and fled, and then they were chasing him, and that's where he grabbed Lynn, took her hostage. So we'll get the backstory on that now, presumably. All right, dot, dot, dot for Cabanella. What's the matter? You look like you'd rather be dead, not that you aren't. I was just remembering the fact that right about now, the real me is giving the poor justice minister a real fright. Oh, that phone call? Yeah, he was pretty upset. Um, excuse me, mister! Huh? You really shouldn't be mean like that! And what's this lively little creature? Oh, this little doggy is the warrior who keeps Camilla safe. <laughs> the warrior? Oh my god. I I just love how seriously Sissel takes things. It's really cute. He's a warrior dog, clearly. Oh! Oh, and Cabanella knows that Camilla is Jode's daughter. Oh, he'll have feelings about this. Or he would be if he was actually still full of life. In quotes. Camilla. Gods in heaven. What a terrible thing. That poor little girl. Taken hostage. It's a cruel twist of fate indeed. Wait just a minute. Miss Camilla is a hostage? Yes, we're sorry, little warrior. Miss Camilla? A hostage? What's a hostage? <laughs> right back to the story. Anyway, Inspector Cavanella, it's time to save your life now. But you couldn't get very far when you tried before, am I right? But this time it's different, right, Cecil? Yes, we have the doggy. That's right. With us working together, it's a whole different situation. We'll save the inspector in white, and then we'll go rescue Camilla, okay? Okay, so because Cecil is kind of sort of a noir detective protagonist, he likes to give people... epithets. It's great fun. So the inspector in white is one of them. I got my word. Did you see that? I needed a word in my brain and I reached in and it was there. And I took it out and I handed it to you. 
Aren't you impressed? I'm impressed. I don't actually think my brain is getting any better. I don't think my memory is actually improving like I thought it was, but I did that. So that's exciting. All right. Let's save the inspector in white and then we'll go rescue Camila, okay? Okay, let's hurry up and get through this. Gee, kids, you're making me feel like an afterthought. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Inspector Cavanella is upstairs. So our first step is to get up there. Sissel, I'll go up first and wait for you. God, he's so fast. Oh my gosh. Okay, Lovey Dove, we need your help. Lovey Dove is a great name for his pigeon. Because doves are pigeons, if you didn't know that. Carry this measuring device upstairs. It has Mr. Ghost in it, so don't drop it. I don't think pigeons are that strong, but that's fine. Wait, hold on. Do I have a thought? I have a thought. You've got grit, little pigeon. I'd better get up there before the little pigeon's strength gives out. Missile is waiting for me. I'd better hurry. All right. I'm up. Oh my god, what a good dog. There you are, Sizzle! Sorry for the wait, Missile. Look at how we rhyme. We rhyme. Four minutes from now, the inspector will be killed by a gun. You just jump in there and stop him from firing, would you? There you go again with that stuff. Besides, it doesn't make any sense. If you stop him from firing, he'll just kill you some other way. Wait a minute. That sounds familiar. Yup, same situation as mine. Your best bet this time around is to allow him to shoot and then save Cabanella without him noticing. Whew, it's even worse than last time. Anywho, jump in there and do something. Do something? Okay, I'm ready to jump in, Sissel. Don't forget, whenever you want to use my powers, just tap right trigger. I'm sorry. I know we've listened to it. I don't care. That solo. So good. That ominous shift down. And the bass, like the, the low end cuts out here. And then it comes in with a vengeance during the solo. Sorry, it's just so good. The, the, the timing on that is really weird and complicated and would be a huge pain to play live. Just saying, at least if you're me. I really hate having to play complicated hard to count rhythms. <laughs> they are not my strength. Wait, does that cut to 5-4? Yeah, I think, I think what's going on there is that I think that they're doing triple against the duple and everyone else is doing duple. 
And that's really hard to do. It's hard to count triplets when somebody else is playing eighth notes. I, I feel like that section right there does something slightly different with the time signature. But it may just be an illusion, too. I'm sorry. And no, I'm not a jazz person because jazz is more about clever intricacy than it is melody. And I am exclusively attached to melody. So if something does not emphasize a strong, clear melody, it's not gonna be my favorite. This is fine, it's fine. But that's that's not the point of jazz. And what the point of jazz is, is not something that I fully appreciate. I get excited, oh, wrong button. I get excited watching jazz live, that's exciting, because then I, then I can appreciate the virtuosity of it in the same way that one would appreciate watching gymnastics performed live you know it's like whoa look at that cool really hard thing they're doing um but it's not the music that's the reason why i get excited about jazz <laughs> i'm allowed to swear a little bit on the stream so i will say uh, when, when it comes to weird time signature changes that is what i officially refer to as proggy bullshit <laughs> that's the official term um several of my uh, bandmates and friends are progressive metal heads, so I will be like, is this prog? It's gotta be prog. It's got the proggy bullshit going on. Um, one of my, uh, one of my bandmates, the guitarist in the Returners, his, his, uh, primary, like, guitar project is all time signatures all the time. It's just a bunch of guitars playing awesome, complicated stuff. It's really cool. I grew up on Irimatsu, so I like pr weird proggy nonsense, okay? <laughs> like, that's secondhand, you see? Because Irimatsu grew up on the proggy bullshit, and then he put that into his stuff. <laughs> but the thing is, there's, there's a lot of prog that does have a driving melody in addition to the weird stuff that they're doing, and that's the stuff I like. What can I change here? I'm sorry, I need to get back to playing a video game. Okay, photos, a knit hat. Oh man, one of my friends and former bandmates um, in the previous band that I was in is a King Crimson super fan. So he'd be very excited to know that King Crimson has been mentioned. All right, it's a helmet, a book. Is there anything here that I can trade? I don't think there is. But that's okay. I think we have to wait until the final second here. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, we'll try talking. Let's see what happens here. So, Sissel, could you explain something to me? Exactly how did the man in white die? He got shot with a gun. Gun, huh? I've always wondered about those things. How can people die when they hear that loud bang? Huh? Oh, uh, hmm. Why do they? I don't remember. <laughs> Folks? I have a thought. No, I have a thought here. Missile doesn't understand how these things work. He's a dog. Dogs do not understand these things. However, there's a lot of absolutely basic fundamental things about how the world works that Sissel doesn't know that a grown human adult man would know. And everybody else who's dead that we have picked up on or that we have that we've encountered winds up getting their memory back sometimes like the minister they have their memory and they're kind of pretending that they don't because they have a mental issue going on what if 
Sissel isn't human and he's not from this earth. What if Sissel, as we see him here, is actually some sort of an alien being or something else like that? I'd originally thought that Ray, 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 White, Ray, was like an angel or something like that. Um, but I've, 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 I've kind of wondered, like, Yeah, because cause Sissel can't read, and there's a bunch of things he doesn't remember, and sometimes the other characters will be like, how do you not remember that, man? That is a really weird selected memory. And I can attest to the fact that memory issues strike irregularly and inconsistently. Um, and again, there is another detective character, who we shall not name, who has similar issues with fundamental things about the universe um, that he seems to have forgotten on the most basic level which I still hold out a bit of an idea that um, it's possible that the universe has changed or was not the same or something. And so actually he wouldn't know these things any more than we the player know them. Um, but in the case of this game, what if Sissel has no reason to know these things? What if Sissel wouldn't know these things and he doesn't know how to read? Not because he's a dog. I don't think that it's going to be he's a dog and they're both dogs. Maybe he's an alien dog. I don't know. But I think I think that... Hold on. I'm just stacking some dumb stuff together. Is that all right? We're just going to build some card houses here. <laughs> okay. Raised by bears in the forest. Yeah. No. Okay. So we know that a piece of meteorite struck the man in red. A piece of meteorite, a piece of meteorite struck the man in red, killing him. It also remained in his body. After he died from that, he somehow got the ability to do ghost powers we don't know what happened there 10 years passed five years passed and he was able to kill Joe's wife but where was this dead but not decaying body kept how did he get in touch with the blue people I don't know and I just there what he can do is he can he can okay so hold on hold on we've got several powers in mind um, the ability to possess objects the ability this guy can interact with objects um, but we see the manipulator can control People can, can interact or move living objects, not just inanimate ones, um, which feels like it's more the leveled up version of the power that our main character has. Um, our main character does not really have any memories of the events before he gains consciousness. He doesn't have any that sounds familiar, does he? I, he, and he, but even if you do think something sounds familiar, like there's the power of suggestion can make you think that something sounds familiar that you've never heard before. Um, you can play up memories sort of that way. It's, it's, it's a thing you got to be careful with. Um, if you're trying to get to some sort of truth, memory is not actually a very reliable source of truth, unfortunately. <laughs> um... The Mandela effect is when you remember something that didn't happen, yes. Or, well, specifically, it's when you feel as though something was fact, something was true, and the reality of, of the world today is not that. And so there has been a change between the reality that you remember and the reality that you seem to be in now. And then it gets expanded to there's like group experiences of that. But yeah, that's the Mandela effect. Um, but yeah, so. I had, I had speculated that maybe these are two halves of Sissel, the man in red, split into his good component and his bad component. 
But I, I wonder if the being that I am right now doesn't have a physical form. I don't know why he would latch on to the man in red in that case. Or why he would come into consciousness after the man in red was killed. I don't know. I don't know. Something's not right there. But I'm gonna I'm gonna sit on this idea that Sissel does not have a life of experience that would teach him these things, and so he doesn't know these things. He doesn't have this understanding of things. Also, it is clear that those who die do not do not necessarily disappear at, on like the the morning after they die, because the man in red is still here and he is dead. So it's possible that there's something else that I am that artificially has that. And it's possible that if Ray left, maybe Ray was the same sort of thing that I am. Or it could be that Ray just straight up lied to me. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so let's see. How do guns work? I don't remember. Oh, brother. I hope I never lose my memory. Mr. White Coat here died because he got shot with a bullet. Bullet? A little lump of metal that proves fatal when it gets lodged in his head. Aha! I get it. It's like a little tiny Mino, right? Yeah, um, something like that, I guess. Different shape, though. <coughs> In that case, I'm sorry, I have to, like, gasp for breath every time I do missile. I ought to be able to use my powers on it to save the man in white. Yes, that's right. We're going to swap the bullet with something else. Hey, good news, eh? White coat. Can't anybody here just call me Cabanella? <laughs> Sorry, Cabanella. I call him Cabanella. All right, I can't go anywhere here, but down. Yeah. Okay, the hoist is broken. <laughs> he said it's broken, it's stuck on something. To which Missile and his infinite wisdom says, maybe the man in white put a curse on it. Yeah, like a message. Do something to help me. Oh, that's spooky. If I have a message for you, I'll tell you myself. Thank you very much. Okay, go ahead. Uh, stop messing with the battered old hoist and do something to help me. You heard him, Sissel. Oh boy. Amazing. Oh hey, check that out. Now I can move. What can I do from here? I can't actually die in the middle of the flashback. Okay. Ah, jig is up. We wanted to see what this would do anyway. <gasps> okay, I'm actually really glad that I did this because this is scary. Did you see the whole screen turn blue? The whole screen turned blue. I don't like this blue. I mean, blue is actually a color that I like very much, but this blue is bad news blue. All right. Are you ready to see what happens when we get detected by the bad man? All right. <clears throat> now, good spoiler shot. I'm giving you a present. All right, voices. I got to do this. What's going on? I've never seen the ghost world like this. So you're here, are you? He sensed my presence. Oh my! Oh, oh no! Oh no! He's looking at me. Oh! Oh! Oh, that is really effective. That is really effective. Oh, they know what they're doing. He turns and he looks right at you. 
It's like when they make him grin that grin and we just don't like it. I just don't like it. So he looks straight at you, straight into the camera, and he says, I noticed you. Do you think you can stop me, do you? Dot, dot, dot. I don't know why you're wearing my face, but you might as well give up now. I control everything. Damn it. Everything, including the life of this police inspector in white. Wait, don't shoot. Oh, man. Time's up. <laughs> the game is like, in case you missed it. In case you didn't pick up on this. I guess using my powers right in front of the other me wasn't such a good idea. That was pretty cool, but not too much. Like, it didn't get to the point of being, like, scary and comfortable. But I imagine playing this for the first time, especially if you're younger, when he turns and looks at you, you're just like... Oh. That's very cool. A+. plus. Especially when somebody gets shot because of it. I guess the only thing I can do is aim for that break when he looks away. I just have to be sure I don't miss my chance. Guess I'd better rewind the clock again and see if I can pick up any other clues. Alright, you ready for music? Okay, we go up. Alright. Save this character in white. We should do it without stopping the guy from firing and without him noticing. So we didn't realize that the dialogue was changing this time around. In other words... Once it's fired, the bullet will be the key to this whole thing. Don't forget, whenever you want to use my powers, just tap right trigger. What can I change? What can I exchange the bullet with? Have I done this conversation already? Okay, yeah, yeah, this is the gun conversation. Okay. Time is passing. Okay, it's something to do with while he's turned away. anything I can do while he's turned away. Oh, did you see that? That bad Sissel turned around! Do you have to call him that? <laughs> but yeah, maybe this is our chance to, do, to try some ghost tricks. This is the only time he takes his eyes off of me, too. If you have something to do, do it now. Time to take the first steps towards saving the inspector. Oh, I'm gonna make it so that he can't, so that he can't see. Oh, well, maybe not. I thought that it was gonna make steam, but it didn't make steam. What else can I reach? Can I reach anything else? Is the book gonna be a bullet? I don't know. Oh shoot, I missed my chance. Yeah. Oh, when he here he's turned on oh well I guess he's paying attention. Okay, what else could I do when he's turned around? Yikes! I'm a little scared right now! 
Why didn't he die? Because he's already dead. He died 10 years ago. I knew full well he wouldn't die if I shot him. Then why did you go to the trouble of shooting him at all? Time's almost up. That's enough chit chat. But now the situation has changed slightly. These last split seconds are our chance. I can't do anything with the gun. I don't know what to do here. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to do. Like, it feels like I ought to be able to swap something. Yeah, no, I thought about the helmet and the lamp, but they do not swap, in fact. Unless it's the base of the lamp. Yeah. All right, I don't think we did that. Okay. All right, let's try this again. Oh! Oh, I just had an idea. Wait, you can't swap those two. Okay, never mind. I was thinking you can maybe swap the base. Hold on. No. No. I'm trying to connect the kettle to this. I don't think... be traded with the helmet like it's just there's a bunch of things that feel like they're shaped same but then they aren't the, sh the same enough I guess I could sit here. No, wrong one. It feels like there's something I'm supposed to be able to do. I'm trying to get between the desk lamp and the kettle, but I guess that's not going to work. Hold on, we're gonna we're gonna read this instead because this is the thing we've got. Okay, so I don't know who I am. The man I pursued, thinking he was me, took Lynn hostage in the park ten years ago and was hit by a meteorite and killed. 
Yeah, I don't know who I am. That's a good question. Here's Lynn. She was apparently manipulated into shooting me by the ghost of the man who lost his life while trying to hold her hostage 10 years ago. Anyone else? She's, ah, missile. He was blown away on the wind, but then I, but I met up with him again when he came floating along in the sewer. All right, the odd blue doctor. His plan was to steal the corpse from the site, but Inspector Cabanella saw through his plot and bribed him to bring the body to the junkyard's maintenance building basement. Okay, Cabanella. In order to find out with the junkyard super's help, the source of the manipulator's powers... Oh, that is a badly, very awkwardly written sentence. He had the man in red's corpse brought to the junkyard's maintenance building basement. With the junkyard super's help, in order to find out the source of the manipulative powers, he did this. All right, Pigeon Man. Working with Inspector Cabanella to find the source of the manipulator's powers, he was examining the man in red's corpse. That fact was what made him a target to be killed. Ah, joke. He feels responsible for having driven an escaped suspect to take Lynn a, as a hostage and meet his death 10 years ago. He feels his wife's death was his punishment. Yes. Ah, look at that! This is what I was looking for earlier. Okay. The man I was pursuing, who I was convinced was me. His true identity is the manipulator. The spirit of a man who was killed by a meteorite fragment 10 years ago. Tonight, he was planning to get revenge on all the people who contributed to his death. Excellent. And of course, they give him the one smile. The one facial expression that our guy never had. Okay. After making the threatening phone call, Inspector Cabanella lost his life here, killed by the other me. basement of the junkyard's ma maintenance building. The mechanical murder machine here that looked just like the one in Camilla's old house is blown up by the old man in red. Or by the man in red. Alright. I haven't looked at this in a while. A prison. It's called a prison. The phone line apparently connects to a place called the death chamber. Like all these things that he didn't know. Somewhere on the prison grounds after escaping his cell, Detective Jode was caught here by Inspector Cabanella. There's nothing else here. All right, the chicken kitchen. The suspicious couple is nowhere to be seen. The meddlesome investigator is nowhere to be seen, and the restaurant seems to be peaceful again. This is where the justice minister's wife went when she moved out on him. After a dramatic battle, the bonds between parent and child are strengthened. The daughter is now feeling dizzy in bed, while the lady is dangling from the ceiling. No, she did get down eventually. Okay, Camila's old house. Scorch marks per Detective Joe Jode hid prove that a murder machine was used in this room. Then here, the Justice Minister's office. After revealing everything, the man seems to gain a brief sense of peace, but he is destined to, to tear his hair. He is destined to tear his hair out again. It's a bit of a tongue twister, don't you think? Okay. The headquarters of the police's special investigation unit. The chief is wiggling his toes as Lynn. As usual, Lynn, shown on the security tape, was apparently being controlled by somebody when she shot me. Park stakeout point. The park a meteorite fell on 10 years ago. A man who tried to take little Lynn hostage was hit by a fragment and died. The meteorite was named Temsik and it still lies buried near a stone monument. What can I do now that I couldn't do before? Your back is turned, so I should be able to do something. Okay, that changed something. He didn't notice that. Let's see what happens. 
that made enough of a difference. This is not going to blind him in the face. I guess I could swivel this at him. Now then, Inspector. Time to make a big red stain on your spotless white coat. Okay, okay. He still spins it, so I have to make it so that it, does, it it can't spin. How do I make it so that it can't spin? How do I make it so that it can't spin? There's gotta be a way I can do that. to connect the kettle. Oh, that's fine. We're gonna groove listen to this good music. None of these objects can be swapped with each other, I don't think. Unless, hold on. No, wrong one. This button, you go here. Nope. Hold on. Okay, do you notice that it, it, it hadn't fully... Just as a reminder, don't give hints or suggestions or ideas to me unless I ask for them. If I ask for them, I will be asking for them in the form of a hint coup. So. I, I know that it can be very frustrating sometimes when I'm not making an obvious connection. Um, but I promise it'll be more fun for everybody if I figure it out eventually. Okay, well, it looks like there is literally nothing to do. So, we'll see what happens. These ghosts are indeed tricky. All right.
Oh, this is stuff that I've heard about. Yeah, no, like that, that can't be swapped. I don't know what can be swapped. This is another condition of my deal. That's why I put everybody who knew about Temsic. It's going to shoot, it's too late. Again, I'm gonna get shot again? No, wait, our chance is coming up, oh, okay. The last split second, right? Leave it to me. Okay, so you're supposed to actually let it get to failure. You're not supposed to be afraid of letting it get to failure. And then resetting. Well, that's fine. Would you look at that? The bullet is hanging in midair between the gun and the inspector's forehead. Now's our chance. I'm here in the bullet right now. Let's swap this little thing with something else. What? It's our only hope. It's gotta be something here with the same shape and direction as the bullet. I mean, that's gonna be the that's gonna be the book. We're gonna like throw we're gonna throw the book at him. Yeah, well, because the thing is that I was like, it sounds like they want me to stop the bullet, but I don't have the reflexes to do that. But it turns out I don't need the reflexes to do that. Vessel's got it. Wait, that wasn't it. Hurry now, swap that hanging bullet with something else. It's gotta be something here with the same shape. There we go. Oh my god. <laughs> Time's up. That didn't go well. We tried swapping what we could find, but we just made things, oh, that killed him. Oh. Well, look. <laughs> Not nice, kids. Not nice at all. You put a dent in my lovely mask. I guess we'd better look for something softer to swap with. Guess I better rewind the clock again and see if I can pick up any other clues. Oh! Okay, hold on. I want the soft hat. How do I get the soft hat over there? See, cause there's this, this knit hat. I'm gonna have to do something more complicated to get that helmet over here. I get over there. Yeah, because like as long as my little paw is, it's not that long, you know? Like, how am I gonna get... Oh, but I can't do anything when it happens. Okay. Wait. Oh, I think I, I think I did it wrong. Oh, I'm gonna try again. All right, Sophie. The pigeon is saving the day. 
Sophie is snoozing. Oh my god, she's so cute. something I'm going to need to do there. I don't know what it is. But when he turns around, I'm going to swivel this. Oops, wrong button. What's that? Dot, dot, dot. What does that allow me to do that I couldn't do before? I just, I can't do anything with the soft hat and it seems like the soft hat ought to be. Pointing in the same direction. What else would that have allowed? I want to get on that. Like that feels like that should be a time that you put the hat down, but you can't do anything during that moment anyway. <sighs> he won't see that because he's distracted. Oh my god. some shenanigans. Well, would you look at that? Right on the hook! I love knit hats. So warm and most of all, soft. Hey, now that I'm looking at it, that hat is the same shape as the helmet you just knocked down. Ha, huh, I thought so. Now that's the right number of steps. That feels right. That, and it's a good use of time. They do actually give me enough time to do that. Alright, missile. All right, let's try this. Okay. I see there's no reason to think that, because he doesn't know about the swap power. Okay, well, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> this guy's like, 
don't think he noticed. Looks like you pulled off another magic disappearing act. <laughs> and now I say again, I love knit hats. So warm and most of all, soft. Did I, did I do all right? You are the best, you did the best. You did a fine job, little one. You saved another life. And I'll keep doing it too. Over and over. Fate averted. What I saw in just these four minutes gave me all the answers I've been looking for. All our research these past 10 years pales in comparison, right, Professor? So you two were working together. It's about the size of it, yeah. Who would believe a story about a manipulator? So we pursued it ourselves, just the two of us. I'm quite a crazy character myself, after all. Okay, let's hurry back. Back to our time. We have to rescue Miss Camilla. You're right, Missile. And there's a certain guy I have to follow, too. We did it. We did it. All right. All right, Cavanella, you're broken and in really bad shape. His theme is so good, though. It's so good. It is so evocative of exactly the like genre and like the look and feel and style and stuff of what it's supposed to be, you know? Like, I'm just really delighted by the music. After completing his revenge on Inspector Cabanella, the man in red left. And now a new story is about to unfold in a new present. Alright guys, how are you feeling, you old crazy character? Oh god. Hey there, Prof! We're both alive, I see. Yeah, nothing like it, baby. But I don't know if I don't know if I'm getting old or what. I've got a few aches and pains here and there. Yeah, you've got broken bones, buddy. Used to be a little thing like an explosion wouldn't bother me. Yeah, right, like I'm going to believe that. So what, the guy in red is gone, eh? Just in case, I posted special investigation units all around the building. Use his noggin, like a true detective. Let's just pray the boys came through for us. They put emphasis on the wrong syllables for him. They stretched out the wrong vowels and it makes it hard to read his dialogue as written. Damn it, you picked a bad time not to listen to me, body of mine. I mean, that one's fine, but. It's... All right. Well, it looks like both of their deaths were erased. Unfortunately, in the case of the inspector in white, I can't call it a complete success. But in any case, these two have the information I need to start tracking the manipulator. I'd better talk to them. Or I could just groove along with their music. And maybe do some telephoning. Yeah, I'm gonna do a little telephoning. They gave me the option, man. It's fine. This isn't gonna work. Yeah. This isn't gonna work. Most of these aren't gonna do anything, but they might do something. I'm trying to bring that short. Okay, let's see what happens. Be like literally none. There's gonna be none. There's gonna be no. This is not gonna stop me. Next time, I'm still gonna do this. I am invested. I'm invested, but I don't want to miss these. Th I mean, they're probably not gonna give me one for everything. They they probably got just enough that um. Yeah, okay, they're not giving me one. They're like, no. <sighs> but. Oh, 
I'm going to the places I haven't been as much. Nope. Okay, fine, 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 fine. I guess we're gonna do what we're supposed to do. But. It has paid off before. I think that they assume you're not going to obsessively do that at every possible opportunity. They underestimate me. I'm sorry, folks. I should be yawning. All right. Shall we talk to these buddies? Let's talk to these buddies. If I knew things were going to end up like this, I would have tried to die in that explosion, baby. That way I could have been dancing after Big Red by now. See, Big Red is what he's calling the bad guy. And he's saying dancing after him, meaning like he'd be like chasing after him. Hmm. I might be able to really to erase deaths, but it's true I can't do much about injuries. But really, you shouldn't talk that way. Yeah, sorry. I suppose you're right. I just hate feeling so helpless. He was right there within my grasp. All our plans were rested on tonight, and then this had to happen. I guess he's thinking about his spotless record. It's not too late, Inspector. We still have a chance. Maybe I can catch him. Say, you're right. That's not a bad idea. I'll cooperate with you fully. Go ahead and fire away with any questions you like, Mr. Ghost. I'm glad to know we're friends now. Revenge, manipulator, and spotless record. These are, in fact, the questions that I really want to have answers to. Thank you, game. All right, you ready to dig in and get a little bit more information? We're going to do this. Revenge. That guy mentioned revenge. Revenge against the people who stole his life away 10 years ago. <laughs> He's a fool. He's the one who made the decision to take that little girl hostage, and he wound up dead. He only has himself to blame. But what about when he said this? I was murdered by all of you. Detective Jode, who forced me into a corner. Lynn, the little girl who was playing in the park. And finally, you, Inspector Cabanella. If you hadn't done what you did, I never would have pointed a gun at that kid. Dot, dot, dot. Music fades out. Is, is it about to get real around here? Yes. Ten years ago on that day... The special investigation unit was working on a certain big case. We hauled in a young man, an important witness to our investigation. And then I did it. Made two very stupid mistakes. Detective, I'm telling you, I don't know anything about it. Fine, fine. You're under no obligation to talk, of course. But if you don't, the special investigation unit can make the rest of your life a living hell. But I... I've just been assigned to the Special Investigation Unit, you see? They didn't share much info on big cases with a newbie like me yet, and I wanted to impress them. It was only supposed to be a simple matter of taking his statement. But I was too green. I pushed him too hard. I drove him into a corner and made him lose all hope. That was my first mistake. And then I made another mistake on top of that. Did you threaten him with a gun, Cabanella? Cabanella, got a minute? The chief wants to see you about your report. Oh, he he let, him, left, let him go. By accident. Got it. I'll be right there. You stay right here and be a good boy now. And he saunters off. And that's when I did it. I left it behind in the interrogation room. Oh, he left your gun. How did that even happen? My gun. How could you? He used my gun to escape. What he said is true. If I hadn't made that mistake, he never would have had a gun to point at Lynn in the first place. That is 
I'm sorry, but you deserve to lose your badge for that sort of thing. Man, Cavanella. Man, that just seems like a really dumb, 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 dumb move. And yet, yeah, don't take your gun into the interrogation room. Just in case the guy gets it from you. Jeez, man. I mean, I'm not a detective. I've only watched TV and, like, played games and stuff. But, like, yeah. Yeah. They might be dum-dums, folks. They might be dum-dums. All right. Manipulator. We first find out about the manipulator's existence during a certain overseas communication. Oh my god. So everything that I think is aliens, are they gonna just be like, no, there's just a planet of people who are blue, Lauren, and you're just racist against blue people? Overseas communication. For national security purposes, this country keeps tabs on the communications networks. This particular communication was about making a deal with a certain foreign country. He said he wanted them to buy him. Him and his powers. That's how we first heard about him. Of course, we didn't know what he looked like at the time. That's the same uncomfortable thing where he looks right at the camera, but it's less effective because it, or rather, it's, a, it's, it's differently effective. It doesn't undermine that effectiveness because here he's in silhouette, so we don't see him looking at us. And in order to prove these powers of his, he gave them two predictions. He foresaw two completely preposterous, impossible cases. The case of a man who would sing national secrets during a live rock concert broadcast, and the case of a man who would take the chief commissioner hostage in his own office. Hmm, those two inmates at the special prison, eh? We kept tabs on their communications and launched an investigation. And then, finally, we pinpointed where they were going to meet tonight and staked it out. That restaurant, the chicken kitchen. The manipulator plans on leaving this country tonight. Not a submarine that belongs to the other country in this deal. Okay, so the blue people are just foreigners. <coughs> submarine? But well, we haven't been able to find out where it's going to surface. It's terrifying to think what would happen if his powers were to fall into their hands. Right. Highly unlikely they'd use them for peaceful purposes. And now they have that little girl as a hostage. Camila. We have to stop him before he leaves the country. Spotless record. Yeah, let's see what's up. This spotless record of yours. Is it really that important to you? Of course, baby. In some ways, it's more important to me than my life. Than your life, eh? After all, it's because of my record that I'm able to get my hands on all intel as head of the special investigation unit. What's he doing? What's he up to? What is his master plan? I have had this feeling that he needed to work his way up so that he could be in a position to do something. Maybe we're about to get that revealed, what that is, because I got no clue. Unless it's that he suspects something went wrong with Jode's situation and being at the top would let him hear if there was like corruption or something like that. Um, so he could maybe free Jode or something, which wouldn't necessarily be in line with his behaviors that we've seen so far, but he can always reveal what's secretly been going on in his head. And because of my position, I get to direct all aspects of the investigation into the manipulator case. Huh. <gasps> the manipulator case. That's why you cared about your record so much? Of course. Why else, baby? That's such a good song. Okay. Yeah. I just never could believe it, man. Joe shooting Alma. I didn't care that he confessed. There was definitely something more to the story. Some secret. Yeah. Okay, that checks out. That does check out. They did give us the pieces to think it might be that. I did everything I could to climb the ladder. Everything in my power. And then I finally found the answer. It took five long years, though. Five long years.
the manipulator. He's going to prove that Jode is innocent. What incredible determination. Hell yeah. I don't even know if that counts as predicting anything on my part. <laughs> All right, Kevin Ellis' determination. Let's hear what it's been like climbing the ladder for five years to try to save his best friend's life. There's just one thing I don't understand. If you were so determined to help Detective Joe, why'd you turn him back in? Good question. Why didn't you help him escape from prison? That's an easy one, baby. Escaping from prison is a crime. I wasn't about to help him commit a crime after spending five years trying to prove him innocent. And he himself asked to be executed, you know? As a man of the law, I had to make sure the execution was stopped legally. I like this. I do like this. I do like this. And that's why I brought him before the justice minister, too. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. This is this is working. I needed to buy as much time as I possibly could, baby. So that's it, eh? But there's one little unfortunate result of all this. Lynn completely misunderstood your intentions. Ha! What's a little misunderstanding? My baby will come around. Give it time. But there are more important things to do with our time tonight. That is a good question. Hold on. I gotta... So there's this little thing here that I need to update because it, it, it's not, I don't think it's the most updated form. Where? Where on the Drama Queen scale do we put Cavanella? For anybody who was not here when we made the Drama Queen scale. Which I think still needs, I don't think that's, I feel like there's somebody who's supposed to be on here that's not on there. I think the Final Fantasy VII Remake, I think, I think Motorcycle's supposed to be on here and I don't think Motorcycle's on here. So we need to put Motorcycle on here. Um, as you can see, the scale goes from zero to Genesis. <laughs> No, Motorcycle does belong on the chart. Motorcycle is not as needlessly dramatic as Genesis. Not even Liquid Snake is as dramatic as Genesis. Close, but not quite. So, okay, Motorcycle doesn't need a name. If you've played Final Fantasy VII Remake, then you know who Motorcycle is. <laughs> Somewhere between Kojima and Gray Fox. Okay, so we're thinking about like a seven. I think is what we're saying. Yeah, no, I knew that Gact actually had a say over that character, and that's why he's so terrible. Roche. Okay, well, anyway, he's a motorcycle. <laughs> we'll put motorcycle back on the list, and I feel like there were a couple other characters to put on. Um, but are we all agreed <laughs> that Cavanella needs to be on the Drama Queen scale? I'm really excited. I love adding characters. No, I don't think Heidegger is on the chart. I don't know if he was. We'll have to go back and consult Final Fantasy VII Remake because I do not remember. But I do remember that Motorcycle was on it, so clearly some of my memory still exists. Yeah, so the Drama Queen skill, as you'll see, has Metal Gear Solid characters and Kojima himself. <laughs> as well as Crisis Core. Um... But it should have more characters. So if there's more characters that you think should go on here, go to our Discord. Go to stream chat. Make a case for why a certain... Spoiler tag it. So that people who haven't played the game in question won't get spoiled on it. Tell me what it's... This is, be like, this is for character blah in game. And then make a case for the character that you think should go on the, dra the Drama Queen scale. Because I want to continue adding to the Drama Queen scale because it's super fun to bust out the Drama Queen scale and put somebody new on it. So, we'll put him around a 7. I think that's fair. The man does moonwalk everywhere he goes. <laughs> oh man. A 
Oh, right, I have to actually go back to the game before my controller will work. <laughs> Man, okay, well, that's good. I'm happy with that. Are you happy with that? That's good. That's good. That's good story stuff. I think that fits. All of that fits because I've been trying to piece Cavanella together. And I kept thinking I'd figured part of him out. And then something would seem to contradict it. And then when he's like, I'm, you, you gotta, you know, carry on the execution on the phone, I was like, wait a minute. I mean, they're kind of making him seem evil, but they've kind of not been, I don't know, man. And then it's like, oh, actually, that's not what was happening. I'm like, okay. All right. Let's talk to this guy. Let's see what's going on here. Mr. Superintendent. Do you mind if I talk to you for a minute? I haven't always been a junkyard superintendent, you know? I used to be part of the police. Okay, I wondered what this guy's deal was. The police, huh? Not as a detective, but as a medical examiner. I investigated victims' cause of death. That's why he was the one. So that's why he was examining the body of the man in red. But also, I wonder if he built that thing in the basement to recreate the situation with... To, to recreate the circumstances of Joe's wife's death. And if he concluded that there had to be a gun, it was like, but there's just, there's no gun in the original, but there had to have been a gun. If that's like his detective work. Deductive work, I suppose, if he's not a detective. Maybe he found that the gun... Okay. Ten years ago, I was asked to autopsy a strange corpse. Hit by a meteorite fragment and died instantly. That's what the police report said. Oh. Hey, I've been in there. It's a death chamber, isn't it? There were no signs of life. He was definitely dead. But I never filed an autopsy report. That's because the corpse suddenly vanished. Leaving behind only one clue. An unusual corpse? I bet that's what I've been chasing all night. Could you tell me more? Yeah, sure. I have an interest in you recovering your memory and finding your true identity, too. <laughs> He's not going to be like secretly Joan's wife or something like that. That would be really weird. <laughs> unusual corpse. That's the only way I can describe it, too. It was an unusual corpse. He was dead, all right? No question about that. But there wasn't a scratch on him. Not a scratch. But I thought he was hit by a meteorite fragment. I don't understand it any more than you do. I was completely bewildered. But when I tried to autopsy him, I was even more puzzled. I couldn't perform the autopsy. Is this like Superman or something? You couldn't? What do you mean? The scalpel went in, but I couldn't cut. As soon as I tried to make an incision, it would heal up at the very next instant. And that's how it went. I had no scarring or blood either. Hmm. Sounds like the secret of immortality or something. And I never had the chance to solve the mystery. That's because the corpse up and vanished on us. The morgue is well guarded. Nobody could have stolen that body. But there is one way the corpse could have disappeared. What's that? Went up and walked away. Unlocked the door and walked out of the building. Got up, opened the door, and walked out on its own. What? He was dead, but he wasn't dead. We saw it with our own eyes tonight. Not even that explosion could kill him. And he didn't even feel it when he slammed his fist on that stove. Clue left behind. Let's see this. The corpse left behind some data from some testing I did. I got some readings for some kind of radiation coming off that body radiation. I used all kinds of instruments, but I couldn't determine exactly what kind of radiation it was. Some undiscovered type from a world unknown. Wait a minute. Could it be? 
That's right, it was coming from that meteorite fragment. That's why he's got his lab coat, because he used to be a lab guy. I went to that park and tested the spot where the meteorite fell. And just as I expected, I detected radiation coming from that crater. It was the exact same pattern of radiation as that of the corpse. At the time, I thought he was some kind of immortal being. He would die only to come back to life. I wanted to research it all in depth, so I quit my job as a police medical examiner. Several years later, I came to learn the connection between my research and the manipulator case. Thanks to the arrival of this crazy character here. Oh, stop now, Professor. Do you want to see me blush? Tabnella's arrival. It was about a year ago, I'd say. This man in white came dancing into my research lab here. I like that canonically, like, yes, he does dance. They describe him as dancing. Look at him! This is why you're 7 out of 10. Or 7 out of Genesis, I guess, to be more accurate. On the Drama Queen scale, my friend. I heard there was an oddball here who was researching, researching Temsic. Is that you, baby? What the hell, my man? Who are you to be calling anybody an oddball? It's a good question. I was investigating the manipulator case then. And then I heard there was a man who quit the police force to study the meteorite. When I heard that, it was like a meteorite had struck me on the head. Oh my god. Wait a minute. I is is, is one of those No, those aren't our, those aren't our goofs in the in the prison. Right? Those are some other guys. At the time, we were just starting to get leads on this manipulator. We didn't know who he was yet, but we knew he was communicating with a certain foreign country. In one of those communications, we heard the manipulator say this. The source of my power is not of this world. And that's when I put two and two together, baby. The manipulator case and the Tensic case were somehow connected. No, excuse me. The manipulator case and Temsic were somehow connected. Which also explained how five years ago he used his powers to manipulate a birthday surprise a little girl made for her mother. He added that gun to the contraption, most likely by controlling Camila. That's right, because you don't remember, you blank out. When? You're being controlled. So she would have put the gun there. So that contraption in the basement here. You built that to try to help Detective Jode. That's right. Jode and I worked together back when I was with the Force. I used the reports of his case to try and recreate the device. But there was just one part of it that I couldn't reproduce no matter how hard I tried. Camila told Jode it, didn't, it did something it shouldn't have. Made an impossible move. I added that part to the device I recreated. I put in a part that would allow Cupid to rotate. Otherwise, the gun wouldn't fire. So that must mean somebody manipulated Camila's contraption. As a result, we proved to ourselves that the manipulator actually existed. <gasps> it's Lynn! Inspector Cabanella! Hey, baby. I'm having a bad day. Sorry about that phone call. I must have sounded like a real villain. Yeah, you kind of did, buddy. I hated to spoil your image of me, of that cool cat inspector you always looked up to. It's interesting he's serious when he says this. Is that really the image she had of him? <laughs> She's like, oh dear, <laughs> something's happened here. Inspector Cabanella, I'm sorry, I just heard. You were chasing after that man all this time to try and help Detective Jode. This manipulator is such a dangerous character. I was hoping you didn't have to be involved. So that's why you had me arrested tonight, isn't it? 
like I always say, if somebody's in the way, throw them in the slammer. Okay. Even the cops who are our friends in, in games and things like this. No. It's an abuse of power. Uh... Yikes. Tonight, I really thought we were finally had him. But my body gave out on me right at the critical moment. It's like a cruel joke. <laughs> but a joke is a joke. You might as well laugh. All my friends are here. I got a groove to this music, folks. So this one would be tricky for me to remember the rhythms, but I would learn them for it. You know? Like you'd have to learn like, when do you play and when do you not play? And when do you play this rhythm? When are you off the beat? Like that would be the tricky part of, of learning this. Cause I like to memorize my music rather than have sheet music, but I would do it. Yeah, if I, if my, if, if I could make my band learn the soundtrack to this game, <laughs> if my band was still learning music. And this would be like just such a sweet keyboard solo for our keys player. So good. I have to figure out what I would play because this is such a synthy. It's a synth and guitar heavy soundtrack. It's like synth guitar and bass guitar. And so you have to like figure out like, where does the flute come in? I figure it out though. Every time I hear this now, my brain is trying to deconstruct the soundtrack. It's so good. Anyway, I'm sorry. I keep getting derailed by the music, but it's really good. I really do need to get back to making music. I've got a friend here in Toronto who plays guitars. We've been talking. I know a drummer. We've talked a bit. Just, that's just not, that's not a band. So I gotta put a band together and make it happen. Get the Megalomaniacs. They'll happen. All right, game. We're here for a video game, folks. Not just Lauren to talk about music. Jode is here. I love him. Jode! Look at this very serious expression on his face. Oh, man. Like, this man has dedicated five years of his life, everything he does, to put himself in a position to try to save his friend. I think it's safe to say these two men love each other a lot. And this facial expression says it. The minister called off the execution order. And while he was at it, he let Detective Jode go free until tomorrow morning, too. That's a pretty extreme while he was at it. <laughs> that is a lot. Sorry, I took so long to get here. It feels like everything's gonna be okay because Jode is here. He has that kind of a presence. You can leave the rest to me. There you go again. You've always been like that. You make everybody else run around and then you swoop in at the last second. He says this with a smile. This is affectionate. This is friendship. Jode. <gasps> is that Jode's coat that he's had hanging up? Because I thought, I, I had originally thought that was his lab coat, and then I was like, no, that's way too big for him. Who could that lab coat possibly be for, I said to myself. Because it's not for you, little old man. You left this coat with me just before you turned yourself in. I promise to give it back to you one day. The bird is bringing it for maximum drama. 
I was about to say he, he, he needs to change his clothes. He can't just wear that pink thing. He'd probably change out of his prison clothes, but you know, that's fine. He's so cool. He's really cool. This game is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting so long, Detective Jode. Waiting for this day to come. Thanks for not giving up on me, Lynn. God, he looks so cool. Also ridiculous, but cool. <laughs> the combo of prison clothes and detective jacket sends a strong message. I suppose it does at that. <laughs> Either way, this is a man you do not want to mess with. <laughs> okay, I'm off then. Good luck, my old friend. This present you gave me was just what I needed. Thank you. Glad you like it. They're having a moment. These boys are having a moment. God, I can't wait until I can look up fan art of this game. Cecil, are you there? Oh, she's looking forward at me. Yeah, I'm here. You and I have to go find that man. I need your help. Will you do this with me? Sure, but how? We don't know where the submarine is, and the phone line doesn't work. They use communication cables to make their calls. We'll get you hooked up somehow. You'll see. I believe in her optimism. Could you wait here until we do, please? Okay, fine. I'm counting on you. This true self you're looking for. I bet you'll find it soon. All right, I'm leaving, Inspector Cabanella. He's <laughs> like, bye. It's almost dawn. I'm not who I thought I was. I'm actually further from knowing who I am than ever. But now, I don't feel so alone. Each one of us, for his or her own reasons, is looking for the truth. Together, I think we can shed light on these mysteries and drive away the darkness. But it's almost dawn. the 255 to 325 a.m. challenge. We got a new illustration. We got a new background. Oh, we can make a new background. I don't know what that means, but we can do that. Oh, <laughs> oh we could do that. Oh, and the song that we got was just called Ghost Trick. Lingering Death. We got the submarine. We got that bad man. Save your current place and time? Yes. Keep going? Yes. 4.19 a.m. Are we going to beat this game tonight? Lynn kept her promise about getting me hooked up. About two hours before dawn, the phone rang. Hello? This is Jode. Cecil, are you listening? We need your powers. No time to talk. We'll be waiting for you. Chapter 16. Trace complete. Control room. He's looking right at me. Well, you'd better get going. This long night is drawing to an end. Yeah, looks like it. Thank you for all your help tonight. I'm the one who should be thanking you. At the other end of the phone line, I'm finally gonna find all my answers. I better go. Or, or, a single telephone line connects me and the other Sissel. But that single line spreads out like a spider's web to ensnare the fates of many people. And I just reached the center of the web. Yeah, there's multiple rooms here on the submarine. So like, oh, they've got a bathroom. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Welcome to the Yonoa. Detective Jode. How did he get here? I guess we'll find out. Oh man. Okay, Jode is enormous. This this man is even more enormous. <coughs> My detective sense must have gotten rusty. I didn't even sense your presence here in the dark. That's because I switched the power to my mask off, Detective Jode. I used your phone. Hope you don't mind. Egad! Never thought you'd track us here. Especially seeing as you're a death row inmate. And I'm equally surprised about your choice of transportation. A submarine, eh? How? I am a ghost that can travel through telephone wires and presumably the internet and stuff like that. Jode is a very large human man. He cannot telef telephone himself places, I don't think. How did you get here? Did you take a little sub that was faster and attach it to the side of the submarine and then work your way in? Maybe he swam. Maybe he swam down here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe so. It's Jode. That's fair. But how did you find us, my man? Not even the police knew where the Yonoa was going to surface. Confound it. Oh, but they've surfaced. Okay. We detectives have a little saying. If there's something you want to know about a case, ask the criminals. Bullet, the man in red was shot with had a radio transmitter in it. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that's why he shot him! That's why he shot him! Yeah, because when he was like, I knew he was going to come back to life. It's like, why did you do that? Why did you do that? He had a reason. Well, cause they were stalking this guy. And so they were like, in case he gets away, we need to, we need to uh, be able to track him somehow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I love like that the jacket was there in the background, but like not drawing attention to itself, but it's been there the whole time. Huh. I have a little something for you. <sighs> Cavanilla has given me some pretty weird presents in the past. They always prove useful. This one was a radio receiver made to look like a pocket watch. Hmm, yes, Inspector Cavanilla. I hear he's an excellent investigator. By the way, where is that man in red? I know he's on this submarine somewhere. Ah, oh, Cecil, you mean? You! You can relax. That's nothing but his shell. His shell, eh? His spirit isn't here right now. Most likely, right about now, he's controlling your daughter. Please, I beg you, let my daughter go. If you need a hostage, take me. Just please let her go. Bah. There's something our nation needs. Cecil has it. That's all we care about, my man. Nothing else matters. However, it would appear Cecil has underestimated us. He's left behind his precious bargaining chip here. Bargaining chip. Our nation has already researched it. This product that Cecil has to offer. The source of his powers. No. 
they just took <laughs> I love that it closes itself. What? What in the world was that? The Temsic Fragment that gives spirits special powers. And now our deal with Sissel is concluded, as far as we're concerned. What are you talking about? All right, so they're going to double-cross Sissel. Great. Tsk, tsk. What a mistake to make right at the most critical moment. Now then, Detective Jode. Farewell. What in the world? The whole room just vanished. Detective Jode, where did he go? Oh. Okay, the power went out. Cool. But now? Looks like I'm gonna have the doggy with me because I see things that can be swapped. I think I heard an explosion somewhere. In any case, Lynn and the little lady should be here somewhere. I smell danger. I better find them and fast. Or, this phone isn't working anymore. Damn it! They're onto me! <laughs> I guess we can't leave the submarine. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did a pretty good job of catching all of the story bits. Good night, Chrono. We'll see you. All right. <gasps> Wait, is that the doggy? Wait, no, but who is this? I can talk to whoever this is. Who are you? Why are you hiding in the light? What? So you're here, huh? Unless it's... It's Missile! Yes, I think even I remembered who you are by now. What do you suppose that shock was a minute ago? So Missile just... Missile just searched for Camilla and just used the power of his, his doggy love. It, it, it's the most powerful force of all through time and space, through life and death. The love of a little doggy for his mistress can overcome all obstacles. <laughs> I feel like I maybe should have said that in the missile voice. <clears throat> I have no idea, of course. I'm just a little sheltered apartment dog. But with my loss of memory, I can't say I'm much better. Anyway, let's hurry up and go save Miss Lynn and Miss Camilla. Do you think that trusty nose of yours can sniff them out? Da, da, da. I'm sorry to say I don't think it can. Why did I even bother to ask? But you do have the power to swap objects. So let's go find that lady detective and the little lady together. You got it! Okay. Oh, there's another phone. That's going to be internal phones. The telephone is ringing. Wow! It's Miss Camilla! I just know it! My trusty nose is practically screaming it at me! I think you'd call that more of a hunch. Anyway, let's get to that phone before it stops ringing. You bet! We get a time limit, huh? I didn't do it fast enough. I think I just heard another little explosion in the distance. I've got a bad feeling about this. Sissel, look! That black hello, it came off the hook. It's... <sighs> it 
dogs don't know what telephones are, so the telephone is named Hello because that's what you say when you pick it up. Two, he can't see color because he's a dog. Both of those things are adorable and ridiculous and I just can't handle it. They're like, by the way, Missile is a dog. Do not forget, he is a dog. Uh-oh, I'd better answer it fast. We're working on it. Hello, hello, Miss Camila, Miss Camila. What is it, Missile? Oh, Sissel, hurry, hurry. Okay, I'm coming. The path is right here in front of me. I just have to use it. I did it. Hello, is anybody there? It's her, the little lady. It's Sissel, where are you? Somebody please answer. I guess she can't hear my voice. You too, huh? Oh good, I thought she was ignoring me. Somebody help me. Lynn, Lynn is, oh no, Lynn is dead again. She said Lynn. Miss Lynn. We better hurry. Let's go, Sissel! All right, let's go there. <laughs> Lynn died again. That's okay, what is this for? Is this four deaths? It's true, it has actually been a while since she died last. Five deaths, man, Lynn! She definitely wins for the most deaths. Most deaths in this game, I think. Or maybe it is Lynn's night. She's got the most, she's on the leaderboard. <laughs> most deaths in one night. You're a champion, Lynn. Okay, let's go there. There she is. Oh, she drowned. It's no use, nobody's answering. God. Miss, Miss Camila, and Miss, Miss Lynn. Oh, poor Miss Lynn. Yeah, she can't seem to catch a break. It looks like another tragedy has happened. Sorry to keep you waiting, little lady. Sissy, I knew you'd come. Okay, so we have to go into the ghost world, the land of the dead. I don't remember what it's called in this game in order to be able to talk to her. Death's George, who died so many minutes. Yes! Yes! Oh my god, I, I, I'm so glad that Spider's George is still being referenced. <sighs> Incredible. Sissy, I knew you'd come. Miss Camilla! Miss Camilla! And Missile, too! I'm so glad to see you're alright. Well, I wouldn't say I'm alright exactly. Hey, wait a minute. Missile, your voice. I think I remember hearing it somewhere before. What? My voice? Hmm, that's right. Camilla has a core now, so that means she did hear Missile's voice before when he saved her that time. So that was you, wasn't it, Missile? You're the one who saved me in the park tonight. Thank you. Miss Camilla! I'm so glad I was born your little doggy. Cute and wholesome. We need a little bit of sweetness because there's a lot of dying and traumatized little girls. And a little doggy makes everything a bit better. Hey, Missile, could you stay here and watch over your mistress for a while? Huh? But don't you need my powers? I'll see what I can do on my own for a while. After all, you're the only one who can protect her. Like, he's so good with, like, as awkward as he is, he, he like, he gets how to talk to the cute doggy and the cute children. Like, he gets it. Okay, I, I'll do it. Thank you, Missile. All right, time to go back in time. Save Miss Lynn. I wonder what happened this time. I'd better talk to the little lady a little more. And then I'd better do something about the detective lady. All right. Let's interrogate a child. Can I talk to you for a minute? Yes, sissy. Could you tell me what happened to you? Oh, she got possessed at some point. 
I toss Lynn stuff. What happened after I last saw you at your old house? Oh, let's see. After that, I think I fell asleep. I woke up to the sound of an engine. So she was already in the submarine by then. I thought to myself, I have to escape. The next thing I knew, I found myself in this big room. I was so tired, I couldn't move. Ah, they drugged you. And then... Camila! I was so relieved. I... I don't remember what happened after that. She must have passed out. The poor thing. No, she was being manipulated by the manipulator. We know that, Cecil. We know. We know that the when the manipulator takes someone over, they don't remember what happened. You've been through so much. You were very brave. Oh, See, like, he's really good with the kids and the dogs and the things. I think Lynn's probably been through more than me. You've both been brave. Okay, so this is going to be the same conversation that we just had. Alright. Sorry to make you watch this again, but I wasn't sure if there was maybe something else going on. But in fact, it turns out there was not something else going on. We could say. Okay. Alright. There's a wheel that I can turn. There's a monitor. A telephone. Oh, wait. I'm sorry I can't help right now, Cecil, but I think I'd better stay with Miss Camilla. Yeah, that's all right. I think so, too. After all, you're the only one who can protect her. Oh, thank you, Cecil? Yes. Could you say that again? I really like the sound of that. Yeah, maybe later. Oh, boy. So I can teleport back and forth between here and the torpedo room. Got it. Okay, that's good to know. Wander Song is a very good game. I want to play Chicory. Is Chicory on my list? What is this? There's a monitor. Can I reach this from here? No. Alright, well, we're going to turn the wheel. Oh, I guess, I guess now I can, yeah, now I can talk to her. Got it. Oh, Cecil, you're here! I'm sorry, the music is just so good in this game. It's outrageously good. I've heard really good things about Chicory from a lot of my friends, so I really should play it. I just, I haven't, but I should. Lynn, what in the world happened here? I... I don't know. Huh? I just sort of blacked out all of a sudden. Next thing I know, I was dead. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't know in that case. And where's Detective Jode? Is he alright? Uh, I don't know. Huh? The room he was in just disappeared all of a sudden. Now it's all making even less sense than before. Nobody knows what's going on, Lynn. Sorry. Nobody's got any brain cells. Actually, that's not true. The detectives actually have brain cells in this game. <laughs> after we left the super's office, we followed after the man in red. We tracked him with that radio transmitter Inspector Cabanella fired into him with the bullet. The man in red took a boat out to, to sea from a small harbor on the edge of town. Detective Jode and I managed to secretly stow it away on his boat managed to secretly stow away on his boat. Okay. I'm very curious how they did so, but that's fine. Sorry, I'm just... Jote on the boat. Yes. The Jote boat. 
and then we sneaked onto the submarine with him when it surfaced. Before long, the submarine drove, dove back down again. I'm glad that we have at least, at least we get an explanation. Detective Jode and I decided to split up. He would take care of the telephone line and I would look for Camila. I found Camila hiding here in the engine room. She had escaped and run away here. Wow, that's quite an adventure. What happened next? I don't know. Huh? There was a flash of white all of a sudden. Next thing I know, I was dead. Oh boy, it sounds like it'd be quicker to see for myself. All right, you ready to see the little girl cause Lynn's death and it be very dramatic for everybody involved? Because she's being controlled. Oh shoot, if she's being controlled, I'm gonna have to fight this guy. I don't like that. Camila, are you okay? <gasps> Camila? Hello, Lynn. Or is it detective now? It's been 10 years since we last met. This voice, by the way, is coming from Camila's body. So maybe, maybe I should say this in Camila's voice for maximum disorientation. Hello, Lynn. Or is it detective now? It's been 10 years since we last met. Are you... Are you really that man from the park 10 years ago? Well, well. I see there's no need to introduce myself. Give Camila back! She has nothing to do with any of this! I'm afraid I can't do this. I can't do that. This is my last chance. The phone is ringing. It's not for me. Nobody ever calls the dead. What is that gun she's got? The fact that you're here means that my revenge plan has failed. Revenge plan? It didn't happen tonight, did it? His execution. Oh, it's a Tommy gun. Oh, blam, 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 blam. Wow. Well, knowing him, I half expected as much. That's why I was waiting here like this. Waiting for him to show up. Wouldn't it be just what he wanted? To be executed by his own daughter. Dot, dot, dot. I heard about ten years ago. I feel sorry about what happened to you, but revenge? Nobody could possibly know what I've... What in the world? An explosion? Uh oh, I've got a bad feeling about this. Have I been had? Oh my god. Okay, so if there is one brain cell in this game, Sussel does not get it. He did not realize that this was going to happen. You knew it. <laughs> you absolute dum-dum. You orange cat, you. <laughs> Look out. Oh. Revenge, huh? That's a feeling I just can't understand. Of course not. You're not him. She's right. I'm not him, am I? He was going to shoot Detective Jode as Camila when he came to rescue her. It's just too horrible. Dot, dot, dot. Anyway, let's bring you back to life again. You didn't have to add the again part. She's finally disturbed by her dying. I think, I think... The novelty of it perhaps has worn off. Also, the emotional trauma of all the other stuff going on probably doesn't help. So let's see. The cause of death this time was that mysterious explosion. You're pretty up for a dead woman. You know how detectives love a good mystery. It's like a shot of vitamins. <laughs> Man. And what do you mean for a dead woman? 
Anyway, <laughs> he's just like, I'm not going there. I guess we should look for a way to stop that explosion. All right, let's do this thing. Finding clues is like a dose of minerals to a detective. I'm afraid with my memory loss, I have no idea what vitamins or minerals are. <laughs> All right. I cannot get anywhere. Still can't get anywhere. Take a step closer, little girl, so I can get into that gun and use that gun to get to the water wheel so that I can stop the explosion. Because, like, obviously, that's what's going to happen in this game. No, that's... That! Yes, that! That's what I want. Yes, thank you. It's no use. I can't get the line to work. That's funny. I thought I could use the phone in the past if somebody was calling. What are you talking about? The receiver has to be off the hook first, silly. Well, don't look at me. I can't do it. I don't have any hands or feet right now. Somebody please answer the phone. If you want something done, you have to do it yourself. What happens if I turn this wheel? There we go. Hey, we somehow managed to knock down the receiver. Somehow managed? Who's to say that's not how I planned it? And yeah, it's true, Cecil's saying nobody calls for the dead, and Cecil does get get multiple phone calls. Like, there's a lot of times that somebody will call someone else and be like, Cecil, are you there? And the other person's like, whoa, whoa, who is that? And then they deliver their message. So yeah, it just turns out that Cecil doesn't have any friends. And Cecil does have friends, because he's a good person. Come on, hurry. Now's your chance to get on the phone. It might be Detective Jode. She's right, I'd better check it out. All right, let's get back up there. Hello, anybody there? If anybody's still there, get yourself here on the double. We're about to head out. Speak up, why don't you answer? Anyway, come if you're coming, we're leaving. Let's go there. We're gonna see what happens. So it must be true what they say that there are restless ghosts on board. Updated the phone book. That does it. I promise to turn over a new leaf, Mom. What? Okay, hold on. Who is he calling restless ghosts? Well, it's true, neither one of us is really resting in peace. Anyway, it looks like the sub just lost one of its crew. Hmm, I guess that means the fate of the sub has changed slightly. Ah. Right. Detective Jode, what's going on in there? I saw this little deal go down once before. In just a moment, the man in red is about to get his Temsic fragment taken away. Wait, there's a thought. I don't get it. What's happening? They decided to conclude the deal without the other party present. They're just going to go ahead and steal the Tempsic Fragment. Huh? But that's... that's cheating! I think we have more important things to think about right now. Where's the Tempsic Fragment going to go? Hold on. More important things. Her name's Lynn. She managed to sneak onto the submarine and find Camila. She lost her life trying to protect Camila from an explosion. This guy, the eyebrowed villain. A foreigner who planned to carry out a deal tonight involving the powers of the dead. He knew the source of those powers was the meteorite fragment, so he stole it from the man in Red's body and made his escape, abandoning the Yunoa to the sea. Masked Muscle Man. 
He operates the machines in the strange room expertly. He was with Detective Jode when the strange room suddenly disappeared from the rest of the submarine. Detective Jode's daughter, Camilla. Lynn found her in the submarine, but the man in red was controlling her. Okay. He came along to the sub with me to save his mistresses, Lynn and Camilla. Alright. His insistence on a spotless record was so that he'd be able to prove his friend innocent. He fired a bullet with a radio transmitter into the man in red's body and urged Lynn to bring the case to a conclusion. Alright. He was a police medical examiner, but he quit the force to research the meteorite's radiation. He built the basement contraption based on Cavanella's reports in order to further the investigation into Jode's case. Okay, here we go. He snuck onto the sub to rescue his daughter, but then disappeared before my eyes along with the room he was in. Alright, minor crew hand. A member of the crew of the submarine, the Yonoa. Afraid of the restless ghosts he hears are on board, he decides to quit his job. Then, the man I was pursuing, who I was convinced was me. His true identity is the manipulator, the spirit of a man who was killed by a meteorite fragment ten years ago. He confronted, he controlled Camila as part of his revenge, but while he was out, his fragment was stolen. And yeah, Jode has, has his, his, his coat. So the phone book. Okay, the junkyard superintendent was researching Tempsic radiation and the manipulator here. Here we go. The machine here was built by the junk, junkyard super based on reports of the case five years ago. The man in red blew it up. Okay. And then here, the control room. One of the rooms on the sub Detective Jode hooked the line up to. It disappeared suddenly from the rest of the sub with Jode, the masked man, and the man in red's body trapped inside. See what happens if I lower these switches. It won't budge. Maybe it's broken? Oh well, guess I don't have to lower it now. And if I ever had to move it, I could probably get Lynn to do it for me. Okay. Okay, so that is... Hold on, we're gonna see where that goes. That goes here. Oh. Ah, shoot. Ah, shoot. Ah, shoot! Ah, that's what you're supposed you're supposed to get that. Okay, so there so he he took it, he's admiring it. Okay, so I can't get there from here. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to bounce. I'm supposed to open that, go in here, and this will bounce once and do that again. Four minutes before Death World. I can't use the phone in time. Okay. Okay. Well, let's see what's going on here. The objective has been achieved. Now we detach the control room as planned. Yes, sir. Farewell, sir. Cecil, what, what just happened? The whole room just disappeared with Detective Jode in it. Don't worry, Lynn. I bet Detective Jode can take care of himself. The main thing right now is rescuing you and the little lady. I can't believe this is happening. Now then, I'd better hurry along before Sissel discovers what he's lost and comes after me. The Yonoa will be his coffin. May it lie buried here in the deep sea forever. Farewell, Sissel. But Aha! So that's the co
cause of that giant explosion. Huh? What is? Don't tell me that's another thing you've forgotten. The torpedo. It's like, well, you've heard of a missile before. <laughs> yeah, sure. But a different missile comes more readily to mind. It looks like he plans to sink the submarine with that thing. Oh, speaking of dogs. Look who woke up. Sorry. We're going to have a little moment. There's no music. There's no nothing. Just a really cute little kitty cat. Isn't she so cute? Aren't you excited to see her? It's a Sophie. It's a Sophie. She's so good. She's so good. You gonna you gonna give us a purr? You gonna give us a purr? No, you're not gonna give us a purr. Well, that's all right. Okay. <clears throat> We're gonna play the game like this now. Sophie, you're so cute. I love you, baby. My time, meow meow. She's a very good kitty. So she just likes, she, she'll only go on this shoulder. If I try putting her on the other shoulder, she's like, what are you doing? And she stops. She like, she like shifts over. She hooks her little paws in. But I just trimmed her claws yesterday. So they're not, she's not going to scratch, scratch me into pieces. All right, Sophie, I'm sorry. I'm going to do voices. You're not going to like this. That's okay. She forgives me. All right, we're going to do our best. Are you ready for kitty mode? All right. This is not good. This, on the other hand, is very good. We have to do something before that torpedo is fired. We can't let it, we can't let it launch. But what can we do? Let's just get to the torpedo as fast as we can. Maybe we can find a way to stop it somehow. Somehow. A true detective never gives up. Well, we certainly can't just ignore it. I don't think there's much I can do. I think if I get up there. Nothing's happening. It sure seems like it should do something. Maybe it's just some kind of ornament. There's no time. It's going to launch. It's no use. There's nothing we can do from here. Now there's really nothing we can do. If only our missile was here right now. I bet he'd try to take it head on for us. Yeah, I bet he would. Hmm. Looks like we better rethink this whole thing. Okay, so that's going to be how we're going to ride some... We're going to do that at some point, anyway. After fate change. We're going to see how this goes. try this and see what happens. Sophie was excited about that there was movement on the screen. Okay, I'm in the capsule. I don't know what this is going to allow me to do, but... fragment your mind at last he's rubbing his nose on it to be fair he's mostly nose
Phone's on. I assume I'm in the capsule. Yeah. Even if the torpedo does launch, we just have to stop it from detonating, right? There's still something we can do. I hope. Why was the I hope at the end of the sentence? Why was the hope? Why was the I hope at the end of that? I'm struggling here. Why was the I hope at the end the strongest part of that sentence? Okay, here goes. Oh, jeez. Why is there a mouse here? The rats are the true heroes of the day. Sophie was really excited about this. I came along for the ride without giving it too much thought. But was this really the best move? I think so. We just have to keep it from going off, right? I'm sure this poor little rat will thank us too. See, the stakes have just increased. How in the world did it get in here? I think these outside parts are supposed to be weights of some sort. Spinning black things, right? Apparently their spinning helps the torpedo maintain its balance. They must be pretty heavy. I wonder if we can use these weights to our advantage somehow. Gyroscope. Joint striker, gyroscope, detonator. Do you know how a torpedo works? No, I can't say I do. Wow, detectives sure know a lot. I saw it explained once in a book. On impact, the fuse on the tip is depressed. That in turn sets off the detonator detonator, huh? That must be that red button. So how do we stop it? Hmm, they didn't explain anything about that in the book. Wow, detectives sure know a lot. Or not. Hmm, this looks like just the thing. If we clamp this thing on the fuse, it should keep it from moving. Uh, so what does that mean exactly? It means we might be able to stop the, stor the torpedo from exploding with this. I have to admit, I don't understand all the details, but I do want to give it a try. Before we can do that, it looks like we have to get something out of the way first, huh? This is probably the detonator. Hey, don't press it, the torpedo will explode. Uh-oh, better be careful. But you know, there should be a safety device around here somewhere. Safety device, huh? That sounds promising. We have to put the safety on before this thing blows up. How do I get the mousy? It's a stubborn little thing, isn't it? Huh, quite a worthy adversary. You do know the rat isn't the main focus here, don't you? Okay, true. But until it's out of the way, we can't set the safety device. Huh, you're right. If only our missile was here right now. We have to get this little creature to leave somehow. At this rate, we're going to blow up the submarine. Uh-oh. We have to set that safety and keep the torpedo from detonating. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do...
Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm gonna make the mousey move. By turning the thing upside down. Great, we've dumped the little creature off. Wow, those weights were heavy enough to turn the whole torpedo over. Now for that safety device. Right. There, we clamped the safety device on. We did it. That should keep this torpedo from exploding. But there's just one problem. Problem? What's that? The torpedo is still going to impact. We can't do anything about that. Uh-oh. Baby cat. I don't know if you could hear this cat snoring. Hmm, it looks like the torpedo still hit the submarine. But it looks like the submarine is still okay. This changes everybody's fate, including the little rats. Cecil, we did it! Fate averted. What's the matter? You still look unhappy. We stopped the torpedo from blowing up, but we still opened up a gaping hole in the submarine. Hmm, you're right. I guess... I guess that's just what missiles do. They're unstoppable. Huh? Am I hearing things? Anyway, I guess we'd better get back to the present as quickly as we can. Right. I'm worried about Camila. Sega. We managed to stop death for now, but it hasn't disappeared altogether. Actually, that should be altogether one word. It's a, it's a different, has a different meaning. It's now slowly but surely filling the room. Okay, that is a good point, Blue Glass, and it is actually 10. So I guess next time. Do you hear this? Sorry. <laughs> All right. Oh, I woke her up. The rest of Toot Crasser, thank you for following with me and my snoring kitten. This is Sophie, for anyone who hasn't met Sophie. She's a, oh, she's a good girl. And she has had enough. She's going to smack me in the face with her tail and then try to sneak onto my desk. Okay. She wants to see what's on the game. Okay. All right, this is a good stopping place. Uh-oh, water seeping in through the hole where the torpedo hit. I've got to get them out of here. I'd better go meet up with Lynn. Okay. Oh, hey, options. Oh. Oh, I thought there was a way to switch. Background, here we go. Which one? Oh my god. Oh my god. I didn't even realize I had these. Oh my god. Which one of these do we want? We'll do this. How's that? Apply changes, yes. We're gonna save. Oh my god, Sophie has just sat down on my laptop, so this is good. This is great. Hopefully she won't hit any buttons while we're at it. All right. Well, that was exciting. I think it's safe to say I'm probably gonna beat the game next week, which is actually really exciting. This has been a very, like, reasonably sized game. It has had a lot going on. There's been a lot for me to kind of predict, but it gives me the pieces to make those predictions. And then sometimes my predictions are just crazy. We have yet to see what the Falians are all about. <laughs> and the soundtrack is incredible. Um, I do want to say, um, so I keep trying and failing to make a concert happen. 
I think I'm going to actually schedule something special for April 14th. That's a Sunday during the day. And I'm going to actually make it a big thing and my roommate is out so I won't be annoying her. Um, and I don't have any other plans or commitments for that day. So there shouldn't be any cancellations other than like health issues. So I will post about that, try to share that. Um, so we can have a, we can have a concert. So follow me for that. Um, if you're not yet in the Discord, please feel free to join the Discord. We're a friendly, silly bunch. Um, other than that, we're going to keep going Undertale Yellow on Thursday. We'll play this. If we beat this next week, then I guess I have to figure out what I'm going to play next. There's like a list of games I've been thinking about playing. Um, I have to figure out what they are. Maybe we'll just do Checkery, because why not? <laughs> I'll see, I'll see what, what I've got on my list. Um, if you've got special requests for Tuesday particularly, if you're like, I would rather this game be played on Tuesday for me, so don't wait until Thursday to play it, um, request that and let me know. Oh, hi, Green Lanyard. Yes, sorry. It's it's past 10 o'clock, so we're just wrapping up. But hello, thank you. We are so close to the end of this game, I think. It's very exciting. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start thinking about what we're gonna what we're going to play on Tuesdays next. So everybody think about your requests, and we'll make this happen. Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate you as always. I hope that you have lovely days. We will pick this up next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And Sophie says meow, which is to say goodnight. Bye.